se de anke pe o tun tun anure anure baba lantoro lantoro si le kwa nure si le po mure awa o to si ele se ele se de anke pe o tun tun Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They send the one welcome to all our viewers on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We thank God that God has invited you into a divine meeting with you today. We pray that this meeting shall be a meeting to remember that God will share his wonderful words that will change your life forever. Let us pray, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, the Michael, most holy and blessing Father. We thank you once again for grace. Given to us to be able to sit with you at the foot of a cross today to hear the wonderful dwells from heaven. And I know that your speaker, let your word go forth with power and fire. Let your name be glorified in my life today. At the end, we will have cause to give you all glory from adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, in Jesus' name. And our reading today is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 108, verses 1 to 13. The book of Psalms, Psalm 108, 1 to 13. You know, the Psalms were songs that King David was given under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and they were written at various times in his life. Most of them were written during the default times, out of great distress and tribulation, but they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So the Psalms are very, very powerful, just like the rest of the Bible, because God gave him this songs to be written to express what they were going through and what he needed from God. In this particular passage, he said, Oh God, my heart is fixed. That was the first opening statement. What does that mean, my heart is fixed? It means that he's not double-minded. Most of us, when we pray, we have the mind that, well, maybe God will answer, or maybe he won't answer. I don't know. I've been praying for some time anyway. Let me just continue to pray. The Bible says, anybody who is double-minded cannot receive anything from God. It's the book of James, chapter 1. We also go to Psalm 57, verse 7. It says, my heart is fixed. That in, he established that on God go. That, Lord, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to doubt you. I'm not going to have a double mind about what you're going to do. How you're going to deliver me. How you're going to save me. I have no doubt about that. So isn't that good to start a conversation with God by telling him? And of course God knows your heart. <laughs> Even if you don't tell him, he knows whether you're talking about it or not. Because the book of James, chapter 1, verse 8, says that, uh, let's have verse 6. It says, well, let me ask in faith, nothing will bring, for he that wavereth, what does that mean? Wavering is actually shaking up and down. He that wavereth like a wheel of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. But let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You see? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, and he cannot receive anything from God. So if you are in the habit of doubting God, but that God will help you or save you, please let that thought get out of your heart. This is the reason why your prayers are not the answer so far. And the more you have that in your mind, the more you prolong your agony. So you need to be delivered from unbelief and doubts. And the fixed mind, which is fixed on God's promises. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It's the word of God that will give you faith. Because the word of God is in spirit. Faith is in spirit, which only Jesus can give you. Say, so, oh God, help us out 57 verse 7. Number seven says, says, My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. See? I will sing and give praise. It's very important that when your heart is fixed, you can give God, praise God without any hindrances you know, in your heart. Because you know the God you're praying to, you're singing to, is going to hear you, going to answer you. There's no doubt in your mind. So they won't give you more impetus 
to praise him and worship him, knowing that you will see in the Bible says that he that comes to God must believe that he is and that is a water of those that diligently seek him. Seek him in worship, seek him in adoration, seek him in your holiness. You will be rewarded. That's Hebrews 12 verse 6. Then it goes on, I will sing and give praise, even with my glory. Then I was all my strength. Everything, my heart, my soul, my body, would I sing praises unto your name. Why? Because God is worthy of our praises. You know that's what they do 24 7 in heaven? Is to praise God, the angel, because of them, the people, the seraphim. That's all they do. Because every time they see a different manifestation of God, and they are in their awed, and they praise Him more. Then, even with my glory, that means the best I have. I will use to praise you and honor you, Lord. Says I wake, sometime and a half, I myself will awake early. This note, I wake. That means somebody, it requires somebody who has been sleeping, somebody who comes up in his spirits, somebody who has been you know, like dead and now has come back to life. So he's telling himself that, look, I will no longer keep quiet, I will no longer be oppressed, I'm going to rise out of my slumber, out of my weakness. Praise God. And he says, I will awake early. That means early in the morning, he would praise God. What do you do when you wake up in the morning? You just rush to the bathroom quickly and get ready to walk. Do you set out 10, 15 minutes to thank God that he woke you up? Do you ever do that? Because that will determine what happens to you throughout that day. If you woke up praising God and honoring him, God will walk every inch of the way with you throughout that day. He will not allow you to fall into addictions and hide him. But if you woke up with him, praise him, then thank him, that's going to wash him out, and wash your face, and rest the walk. Then, ahead of you, that trials and snares. He said, I will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord. Let's go to Psalm 57, 8 to 11. I'm just keeping reading that. That's in the Bible, explains the Bible. This is somebody who is determined that when God wakes, if you do that, <laughs> To wake up is a privilege. Any of us take it for granted. We sleep, we wake up, and we're up and running. We don't know there are thousands that did not wake up from their sleep. See? That thing you took for granted is <laughs> a special grace of God that you even woke up. It's not like a power that you woke up. When you woke up, anything can happen. So many have died in their sleep. Uncountable numbers last night. But you are not counted among them. You need to wake up and praise God and say, God, I thank you. I thank you for giving us my sleep. You didn't allow me to die in my sleep. You didn't allow the arrows of the night to kill me. 57 verse 8 to 11. Say, awake my glory. Awake salt and heart. Now I was, I will use instruments. Salt and heart are instruments of music. And I was, I'm just going to go praise. I'm going to use my instruments, Lord, to give you praise. Early this morning. As a song of Bible sing, early in the morning, you know that song? Morning, in, in the morning, in the morning, I will sing, praise your name. In the morning, in the morning, in the morning, I will rise and praise your name. See, that's where the God is from. So that I wake up my glory, I wake, salt and half, I am myself to awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. These are the same words we read in the same verse. So that I will sing praise to thee among the nations, for your mercy is great. So, he knows that God's mercy is great. You cannot expand and outuse God's mercy. This is where they have the sun in the mercy land. But you can't count the number of sun grains. And so it says that God, your mercy is endless. And that's what the problem of says. He said, the Lord's mercies are renewed every day. Great is his faithfulness. Ephesians 3, verse 20, I think let's go there. 
Lamentations 3. Book of Lamentations. Yeah, the master of the Lord never fails. They are renewed every day. This is Lamentations chapter Jeremiah. Three. Yes. I was going to give us twenty tell us um, yeah, verse twenty two. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. It's of the Lord's mercies that you are alive in watching this program. That I'm alive teaching you. It's because of the Lord's mercy, not my strength, not my power. Said so his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is their faithfulness. Great is that because the Lord reveals his mercy. The mercy of today is different from the mercy of yesterday. For the mercy is paid above the heavens and I truly feel you as well. And it's talking of endless, limitless mercy of God. See, it can't consume, it cannot finish God's mercy. And we human beings, we tend to think that God is like us. No. God's not like us. This is why. You have people who have committed terrible acts, and yet God saves them to use them for his glory. If it was human beings, and you, there's no way, but because of God's mercies, he still uses them to save their souls. Really, we owe God so much. It's a debt you cannot pay. The people that were exalted of God above the heavens and that glory above all the earth. Again, is lifting God up, praising Him. Praising him that God, you are lifted up. Remember that song? Then I lifted up. There's a song, you remember that song? You are lifted up. It said, Be thou exalted. Now, oh God, you are high above the heavens and your glory above all the earth. Be exalted, O oh Lord, above the heavens. Be exalted, O oh Lord. Dancing, holding on the floor, carrying their arms, 
whatever, just don't let me never repeat them. Said, for the Lord of pleasure in his people to beautify the means of salvation by listening. Let the saints be joyful and glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. I may double against sword in their hand. <laughs> I mean, it's a good one. The high praise of God in your mouth, and immediately, once you start praising him, what happens? They are praising sword in your hand. As we know, the praises are praising God. God gives you sword. Now, what will happen next? Verse 7 says, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Wow. To execute upon them the judgment written. This one have all these things. Praise the Lord. See? There's power in the praise. As we need to praise God and release those praises, the vengeance begins on your enemies. You begin to bind them up, you begin to immobilize them. You begin to punish them. Because God is now the one doing the fighting for you. No longer you. As you praise, as praises go up, the power comes down. And that power is the power to execute vengeance upon your enemies. It's a sword. The sword comes down from heaven as you're praising God. And you pull that from your hand and begin to kill the enemy, destroy them. To deliver the his children, his beloved. Save with their right hand and understand them. And he goes into supplication. So first of all, he praises God. He, uh, he tells God his high speaks. That God is worthy. He's exalted above the heavens. His masters have no end. All these things he's saying is just to magnify God. So that he can see God's mercy and God's favor upon his supplication. Many of you, when you kneel down, just say, Oh God, I thank you. Father, give me a car, give me a uh, wife. Give me a promotion. Amen. <laughs> you cannot approach God like that. Even an earthly king, you cannot approach them like that. Such as a heavenly king. You've got to praise him. You've got to worship him. You've got to magnify him first. It's all those praises that will now make God's heart be sought towards you that will answer your requests. So if you want God to be answering your prayers, make sure you are constantly praising him, regardless of what you're going through. If you're in a church, Make sure before you do anything, you give praise to God. The Bible says it's 100. It says, enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving and it's with praise. You see? You want to enter God's uh, courts, you better praise him. Even an earthly king, you can't just go before any king like that. No. You've got to praise him. Praise him. Bow down before him. Roll on the floor before you can actually get his presence, get his attention. That enter into gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. That's the way to enter God's courts. The praises and his gifts with thanksgiving. The door will open to you. Once you come in with praises, you are just coming, Lord, give me this, give me no, they won't answer you. You just close the door. The door will not open. But once you come praise, the doors of heaven, the gates of heaven will open unto you and get God's attention. Remember the case of uh, Esther who went before the king without justification, who had lost her life. But because she had gone before, fasting and prayer, that opened the gate of mercy for her. God has spoken all his holiness. Now listen, I will rejoice. This is God speaking of the divine section. I meet at the valley of Sukkah. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim comes from the strength of my head. Judah is my law giver. So God began to apportion gifts to different tribes, members of his, of his, of his, of his people. He began to give them different gifts according to how I was called them. The Judah was called to be the law giver. So each tribe has their own function. So they're not all the same. I mean, it should be even in a normal family, the children can never be the same. No. Each person, each child has a unique ability given by God. So don't copy people, don't try to be what you are not. God has granted you your own unique anointing and power. 
but it falls on this hand. Don't try and do somebody else's work. The apron is the strength of my head. Judah is my law giver. Genesis 49 verse 10. Yeah, so all these good things he said about these tribes, Manasseh, Gilead, uh, all these places, God chose them and anointed them and gave Judah. And we know it's through Judah that uh, Lord Jesus Christ came. Genesis 49 verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. That was the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the lawgiver. Now, that was a good sight. Now let's go to the bad side. Say, Moab is my wash pots. <laughs> ah, do you know that some people in this world who are the wash pots of God? Do you know what a wash pot is? That's where you put all the dirt. When you wash your, your, your plates, all the debris, the dirty things, you put in the wash pots. May you not be the wash pot of God. All the causes, all the tragedies, they go to some particular people. You wonder why. A good example is uh, Judah, Judah, uh, Judas. He was an apostle, but he was the one the, the, the child of perdition. But the curse came to betray his master. Over Edom, Moab cast my shoe. Now, Moab and uh, Edomites, they were descendants of Esau, and they were enemies of children of God at the time. Because if these are my enemies, they're the ones afflicting my children, they're the ones that will be my wash pot and cast out my shoe. <laughs> now imagine somebody coming home and just casting his shoe up on your, up on your head. That is a place of dirt, dirtiness. Because the shoe has gone over the place, picked up all kinds of dirt and insects, and then cast over you. So it's like a garbage truck. Gabby Devil. Over Edom will I cast my shoe upon Philistia will I triumph. These are all the enemies of children of God. So God is saying, I have my children and their enemies would I punish. May we not be objects of God's punishments or God's, uh, or God's uh, uh, garbage devil. That's what it means. Then he cast his shoe. All the dead, but all the dead will go on that shoe. If you're a wash pot, all the deadness will work on you. And it says, Who shall bring me to the strong city? What's the strong city? That is the city of defense. That's the city of the enemies where they held their defense, where they held their garrisons. See? That is the kingdom that's held by the enemies of God. Remember, the promised land was, uh, it was owned by other people. Before God gave that land to his people, and the people removed them, uh, Israel, the Israelites removed them from the land. You know, like um, all the kings of Bashan were removed from the land because God was with them. So, who will bring this strong city? This city that is held captive by the enemies of God, that God has given to us. Who will bring us to that city so that we can take our due possession? See? So, who will bring us? That city, Psalm 60, verse 9. Psalm 60, verse 9. And it says, Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Edom was where the people were, who were enemies of God. They held the, the, the land of God. But God discomfited them and gave that land to his people. Will thou not, O God, Will not thou, O God, who has cast us off, and will not thou, O God, go forth with our hosts? Thus is many God that you are helper. We have no helper but you. You are the one that will lead us into our promised land. That city that's being held by our enemies right now, the one will give it to us. So there are some people today who are living like papas, who should be living like princes. Why? Because their virtues, their destiny has been stolen by other people. Other people are using their destinies to enjoy life and they are suffering. So that is a strong city. That's where you're supposed to be. Somebody else is occupying that place where you're supposed to be occupying. Only God can take it from them and give it to you. He says, Who will help us, O God? 
we do not go up or go from the host. Says, we thou not go God has cast us off? Well, you can say that because people are rebelled against God. And they are turned their backs against God by worshiping idols. Now, the lady is praying for repentance, that God have mercy upon them, not to leave them in the fall, not to leave them to own devices. See? It says, without all the Lord go forth with the host, give us up in trouble. For vain is the help of man. See? Vain is the help of man. King David did not rely on his power or his connection, his wealth, or his friends. No. He relied on God. He said, For vain is the help of man. We never depend on any human being. Human beings can fail. Only God is a friend that's taken closer than a brother. He's the only one that will not fail you. Many human beings make promises, but when it's time to deliver, they keep on giving excuses. But God will never say, He says, My words are not returned to me void, but that I prosper where I sent it. God will not tell you something and change it. No. He's not like a man. That book of our numbers say God is a man, is not a man that should lie. When he says something, always brings it to pass. But a man can lie and can break that promise. Through God, we shall do brilliantly. So because his heart is based on God, he's saying that because of my heart is on you, God, I know I shall do brilliantly. I shall triumph. For it is he that shall try down our enemies. You see? It is he. I will pray that. That was, it's not by my power, it's not by my might. It's through you, by the Spirit of God, I will pray that my enemies. Take me to that strong city, my possessions, I will possess my possessions by the hands of my enemies right now. You, God, will lead me there and take it from me. It's a kind of faith in God. You too. Maybe you've been stagnated in your life for many years, no promotion, no progress, and try to go for something that pulls you back. Make up your mind this year, you're going to fix it, you're going to go to God's word, and you're going to get back your blessings, you're going to possess your possessions this year. No longer will you be a man behind, you'll be a man in front. That's what you have to make up your mind with. And this year shall be different. This year is God that will help you tread down your enemies and regain your lost virtues, your lost possessions, your health, your marriage, your, your career that the enemy has told you. Only God can get it back for you. So we can see King David has a lot of faith in God. And he knew how to praise God. That's why God called him his friend. Because he knew the way to God's heart, which is through thanksgiving and praises. You too can be like David and be God's friend. When you learn how to praise him incessantly, worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says that's the kind of worship God's like. Like when you worship God, but worship him in spirit. If you're watching me and you're yet to surrender your life to Christ, you need to do it tonight. You don't need to do it any longer. You don't even know whether you're going to be here tomorrow. It's an opportunity you have. Have your sins washed away by His blood. And you become a new creature in Christ. In your way to the kingdom of heaven, say this simple prayer after me Lord Jesus, I've sinned against God and man. I'm sorry for my sins. Have my sins forgive me my sins today. Wash my sins away with the precious blood. And come inside my heart, begin to rule and reign over my life. Take my name from the book of the dead, those who will help I and put my name in the book of life. And I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer and meant it, Jesus will come inside your heart. First of all, cast all the sins. Like all the sins you committed since we are born till the time you made that prayer, be cancelled. And he will come in with the Spirit, become a new born creature, like a new born baby, without any sin whatsoever. He will teach you to be more like him and to get into the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, be my Father. Most merciful and blessed Father, we thank you for grace. That the wonderful words spoken to us tonight, let this word save you to us. We give us the power to praise you and adore you and worship you, thanking and praises that you can manifest in our problems and help us tread down our enemies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That's it tonight. Make sure you read this psalm again. It's the importance of praising God and worshiping Him. When you do that, God will manifest in your situation and deliver you. Take care. Till we meet again. God bless.